This is 7.8. And like I said, we're just going to find the determinant a bunch of times. Um, this is another way to solve equations, to solve systems of equations. So we've learned elimination substitution. We've learned Gaussian Jordan. Hang on one second. Okay, so just a different way of solving systems of equations. We've learned elimination, substitution. Um, we've learned the Gaussian Jordan. We've learned uh, back, back substitution. We learned matrices. We learned all that stuff. So right now, we're going to use Kramer's rule. On your test, you will have one question that says you have to use Kramer's rule. <coughs> so whether you like it or not, you're going to have to do it on one question. So let's look at these. When you have two equations... Kramer's rule is a lot easier. It's when it's a three by three that makes the, the work a little more difficult. I don't want to say difficult, it's a little more cumbersome. But what you're going to do is you're going to find the determinant a whole bunch of times. You find your main determinant, which would be just your coefficient matrix, which would be here. And then however many variables you have, you find a determinant for that. So we find the determinant for X, the determinant for Y. And if you have a third variable, you do the determinant for for Z. So first thing you guys need to make sure that you are aware of is that when you have your equation that it's written in standard form to where your X's are lined up above each other, your Y's are lined up above each other, and your answers are on the opposite side of the equal sign. Okay. So then <clears throat> they have these determinants set up and I'll, we'll work this out. If you notice, ladies and gents, the first determinant, you're just plain D, that's just the coefficients of the variable. So that's where two, negative four, and negative five, three came from. Two and negative four are the coefficients of x, and negative five and three are the coefficients of the y. Everybody see that? Yes or no? Yes. Okay. So then look at d sub x and d sub y. What do you notice about those two determinants, the way that they're already set up? What do you guys notice? Does anybody notice anything? The coefficients of the y and the answers. Mm-hmm. Good. <clears throat> Do you see how 3 and 8 are in both of those? Those are the answers. What you guys are going to do when you set up your, your determinants, whatever variable you're looking for, like your d sub x, you put the answers in that column. So like here, this is d sub y. So you put the answers in the Y column. So write that down. Whatever, whatever variable you are solving for. And we, when I say solving for, it's because you're, you'll see in a second, you're finding the determinant for that specific letter. Whatever variable you're solving for, Put the answers in that column. What my chicken scratch says is whatever variable you're solving for, put the answers in that column. So if I'm gonna find the value of the determinant of just the coefficients, I'm gonna take two times three, right? Two times three and subtract negative four times negative five. Any questions on that? Hey, Ms. Rattles, can you go back? I need to finish writing the message. Sure. All right, so if I'm going to find the determinant, the value of this determinant, 2 times 3 is 6, minus what's negative 4 times negative 5? Positive 20. So your determinant here is negative 14. Does anybody have any questions about that? How we got that? So now that I'm finding d sub x, since I'm trying to find x, I put the answers in the x column, and then I have my y coefficients in the y column. So I'm going to say major, which is 3 times 3, minus my minor, which is 8 times negative 5. All right, what is 3 times 3? Anybody, 3 times 3? 9. 9. Minus, what's 8 times negative 5? Negative 40. So when I add those two together, because two negatives make a positive, I get 
that d sub x equals 49. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so now I'm going to find d sub y. So uh, here, since I'm looking for y, I have the answers in the y column. So I'm going to take 2 times 8, 2 times 8, minus negative 4 times 3. So 2 times 8 is 16, minus, what's negative 4 times 3? Negative 12. Negative 12, good. And then two negatives give a? So I get 16 plus 12 is? 28. 28. Now, the way that you find your solution is you take each different determinant, d sub x, d sub y, d sub z, whatever it is, and you divide each of them by the coefficient matrix determinant. So I'm going to say 49 divided by negative 14 and 28 divided by negative 14. What can I simplify 49 and negative 14 to? Yep. And then what's 28 divided by negative 14? Two. Negative 2. And that's your solution. That's your ordered pair. <clears throat> How do I know that I'm right? What can I do with those numbers? Plug it in. Plug it back in. All right. So we're just going to do a couple more of those, and it's going to make more sense, I promise, as we go along. So here. Think about what you have to find. This is what I expect to see on your homework tonight, and this is what I expect to see on your test when you guys do this. I have to find how many determinants for this system of equations? What do I have to find? I have to find the coefficient determinant. I have to find d sub x, and I have to find d sub y, correct? Always going to be like that, or always going to be like what? Like do like um d sub x d sub y. Like yeah, and if there's a z variable, then you always have to find d sub z. Okay. So to find our coefficient matrix, let's do that first. Just write out the coefficients: four, three, negative two, negative five. Agreed? Yes or no, guys? Come on. All right, so I have four times negative five minus three times negative two. Every step that I'm showing you, I expect to see when you guys do your work. If you skip steps and don't show along the way, you're gonna get points taken off because this is a big concept and you have to make sure that you understand every step. Also, if you miss a tiny little sign, I can kind of give you some partial credit if you're kind of showing that you know what you're doing. So 4 times negative 5 is negative 20, minus 3 times negative 2 is what? Negative 6. So two negatives make a positive, so my determinant is negative 14. So I'm going to put up here, my determinant is negative 14. Now I have to find d what? d sub x. So instead of, since I'm finding x, then I put my answers in the x column. So I have 10 and 11, and then for y, I have negative 2 and negative 5. So I'm going to take 10 times negative 5 minus 11 times negative 2. What's up? The only so like thing that you interchange, whatever variable you're looking for, since we're looking for x, then we plug the answers in for x. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So 10 times negative 5 is negative 50, minus 11 times <clears throat> negative 2 is negative 22. Two negatives give me a what? Positive. So d sub x equals what's negative 50 plus 22. Negative 28. So up here I'm going to say my d sub x is negative 28. Now I have to find d sub y. So I have d sub y. So I have my x coefficients, 4 and 3. And then instead of y, we put answers. Whatever you're looking for is where, when you put the answer. So 10 and 11. So multiply 4 times 11 minus 3 times 10. 
So 44 minus 30, what do y'all get? 14. All right, so how do I find now my ordered pair? What do I do with these numbers? Perfect, very good. So I have negative 28 divided by negative 14 and 14 divided by negative 14. So what is my solution to this system of equations? Two, and one. Two comma what? Negative one. negative one. There was a lot of you, I was going over your quizzes and if it was two negative one is the answer, you put two one. Guys, that's a huge difference, because obviously you didn't go back and check to see you missed your mistake, but then your answer was wrong. That's two totally different things, the positive one, negative one. <clears throat> Questions? <clears throat> some of you are like, oh my gosh, that's so much work for these problems. For some, yes, this is a lot of work, but if you learn the, the, uh, the way to do this, you'll see why it comes in handy sometimes when you're doing other sorts of equations. Obviously, this is very basic, and you could have just used elimination, substitution, and gone on your merry way. But the next two examples, you'll see why it's easier to use Kramer's rule. <clears throat> All right, if you have a problem like this, sometimes the problems will be written where it's just like negative x plus z. Sometimes it'll be written where it's spaced out so you can see that there is something. But whenever there is something missing, you need to account for it, just like we do with long division and everything. So this is 0y here. And this is 0x here. Everybody see that? So now, how many determinants are we going to have to find? Four. Yep. You have to find the coefficient determinant. We have to find d sub x, d sub y, and d sub z. So let's find our determinant for just our coefficient. So I'm going to write out <clears throat> negative 1, 2, 0, 0, negative 1, 1, and 1, 1, negative 3. Did I write everything correctly? Yes. Okay, I didn't miss anything. Now, guys, when we have a 3 by 3, what do we have to do? What's that first step in order to get our 3 majors and our 3 minors? Rewrite the first two columns. Good. So I have negative 1, 2, 0, and 0, negative 1, 1. So let's highlight. I have right here, here, and here. So let's work this out first. What is... Different color. What's negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 3? Negative 3, good. 0 times 1 times 0. 0. 1 times 2 times 1. Positive 2. Okay, now I'm going to say <clears throat> I have to subtract from the minors. What is 0 times negative 1 times 1? 0. 1 times 1 times negative 1. Negative 1. Negative 3 times 2 times 0. 0. So now simplify, guys. What's, <coughs> excuse me, negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1 minus what? Negative 1. Negative 1. When I have two negatives, what does that give me? Positive. Positive. So what is my determinant here? 0. 0. So my determinant is 0. What does that tell me about this problem? Well, anything with zero in the denominator is undefined. Correct. So is there any solution to this problem? No. Your answer here would be no solution. Because I would have to take this coefficient determinant and divide every single x, y, and z determinant. It cannot divide by zero, guys, so it's no solution. Now, if you tried to work that out in our row echelon, reduce row echelon, remember we had to get like zeros underneath? This would have been a disaster trying to do this. If you would have tried to get it so this equation was positive x, y, z equals, and then a y, z underneath it, and then a z equals, and use back substitution, it would have been a disaster because this is a no solution. There's no solution to this. So in this case, Kramer's rule is real easy to do. 
the hardest math you had to do is add negative three and positive two. So we're gonna give you problems where it will be advantageous for you to use Kramer's rule, so that's why we're going over it. This last one together, <clears throat> and then I'm gonna let you guys get working on your homework, and then I will be able to answer questions in person tomorrow. How many determinants are we gonna find here? Four. Four. I have to find the mate coefficient matrix determinant, I have to find d sub x, I have to find d sub y, and I have to find d sub z. Kind of annoying, I know, but we'll get through it. So here's my coefficient determinant. I have negative 1, 2, 3, 2, 0, negative 4, negative 3, 1, 4. Did I write everything correctly? Yeah. Okay, so recopy first two columns. Negative 1, 2, and 3. 2, 0, negative 4. So I have negative 1 times 0 times 4. What does that give me? 0. Yep. Plus 2 times 1 times 3. 6. Plus or minus negative 3 times 2 times negative 4. What is it? Say it one more time. Negative 24. Well, neg two negatives gives me a what? Positive, so it would be positive 24, because I have negative 3 and negative 4. So minus... Three times zero times negative three. Zero. zero. Negative four times one times negative one. Four. Four, four times two times two. Three. All right, so I have six and 24 gives me 30 minus 20. So my determinant of my coefficients is what? 10. So I put a 10 right here. Questions on how we got that? All right, now let's do d sub x. So instead of my x values, what am I plugging in? Answers. The answers, good. So I have 1, 0, 2. And then for y, I have 2, 0, negative 4. And for z, I have negative 3, 1, and 4. <clears throat> Recopy the first two columns. 1, 0, 2. 2, 2. 0, negative 4. So I have here, here, here. What is 1 times 0 times 4? 2 times 1 times 2? 4. Negative 3 times 0 times negative 4? 0. Yep. So now I have minus. <clears throat> What's 2 times 0 times negative 3? Zero. What's negative four times one times two? Negative eight. Yes. And what's four times zero times four times zero times two? Zero. So I have four minus negative eight. Yes. No. Yeah. I have no idea why I have negative eight. We're talking right here, right? So 2 times 0 times negative 3 is 0. Negative 4 times 1. Look at what I did. See, because my, my highlighting was kind of off, I added the 2 in the wrong spot. So thank you. I'm not added, but multiplied. So negative 4 times 1 times 1 is minus 4. And then here is 0. So I have 4 minus negative 4 gives me what? Yep, so my x determinant is 8. Now we have to find y, so d sub y. That means I'm going to plug in answers for what column? The y. So I have negative 1, 2, 3, negative 1, 2, and 3. Instead of my y coefficients, I'm plugging in answers, right? So 1, 0, 2. And then for z, I have 3, 1, negative 3, 1, and 4. Recopy the first two columns, negative 1, 2, and 3, 1, 0, and 2. 
and be careful when you highlight. <laughs> so here, here, and here. What's negative one times zero times four? Zero. What's one times one times three? What's negative three times two times two? Yep, minus. Three times zero times negative three, zero. Two times one times negative one, negative two. Four times two times one, plus eight. All right, so I have negative nine minus six, right? Three, three minus 12 is negative nine, minus negative two plus eight is six. So I get that my d sub y is negative 15. So d sub y, negative 15. And now I'm gonna just gonna find my d sub z and then we're done. So instead of my z, I'm plugging in answers for, co for instead of the coefficient. So negative one, two, three, negative one, two, and three, two, zero, negative four, two, zero, negative four, and then my answer column is one, zero, two. Recopy the first two, so negative one, two, three, two, zero, negative four. So I'm here, here, here. What's negative one times zero times two? Zero. zero. What's two times zero times three? Zero. And then what's one times two times negative four? Okay, minus. Where am I here? See why it's important to keep yourself nice and neat. Three times zero times one, zero. Negative four, zero, and negative one, zero. What's two times two times two? Two times two is four times two is eight. So I have negative eight minus what? Eight. Yep, which gives me? Negative 16. So D sub Z is negative 16. So up here, I have negative 16. Now, how do I find my ordered triple? How do I find my answer? Divide everything by the coefficient matrix. So your ordered triple, what's 8 over 10 reduced to? Eight over ten, guys. What does that reduce to? Four, four over five. Okay, four fifths. What's negative fifteen over ten reduced to? Negative three over two. Negative three over two. Good. And then what does negative sixteen over ten reduce to? Negative eight over five. Negative eight over five. Now, guys, I know this process took a long time, but. I would be hard pressed to think that anybody in here would work out the system of equations using any of the methods that we know and had gotten all three of these fractional answers. So on your test, don't be surprised if you get answers like this. Yes, you can still plug it back in and check. You guys will all have calculators. So you can convert it to decimals and check, but you should not be surprised if you get answers like this because this is when you use Kramer's rule when you get nasty looking answers. That's why we use Kramer's rule. So tonight on your... All right, guys, as a little added, um, maybe visual to help you guys because I know this can be a little confusing. If you have a problem like this, we're just going to set it up. I just want to set up the determinants for you so you can see. I have my X column. I have my Y column. I have my Z column. And this is my answer column. So remember, whatever variable you're looking for, that's where you plug the answers in. So like in our determinant for just our coefficients, this is our determinant matrix for our coefficients. I didn't spell it right, but. So I'm gonna take, this is my X column, my Y, and my Z. My coefficients for X are four, two, and five. My coefficients for Y are negative one, two, 
negative 2. And then my coefficients of z are 1, 3, and 6. All right. You would then recopy the first two columns, figure everything out. But this is what your coefficient determinant would be just the coefficients. So now if I was going to try and find d sub x, right? Since I'm looking for x, that's where I'm going to plug my answers in. Since we're looking for x, that's where the answers go. Does that make sense to everybody? So I have x, y, and z. So instead of x coefficients, I plug in answers here. Negative 5, 10, 1. Then y would be negative 1, 2, negative 2. Then z would be 1, 3, 6. If I'm looking for d sub, <coughs> excuse me, d sub y, all right, since I'm looking for y, then that's where the answers go. So I have x, y, and z. I'm going to put the answers in the y column. So I'd have my coefficients of x are 4, 2, 5. Instead of my y coefficients, that's where I'm putting the answers, negative 5, 10, and 1. And then the z column would be 1, 3, 6. Then again, you have to recopy the first two rows, that sort of thing. And then if I'm looking for d sub z, well, since I'm looking for z, that's where the answers go. So I have x, y, and z, and I'm putting the answers in that column. So I have the coefficients of x are 4, 2, and 5. Coefficients of y are negative 1, 2, negative 2. And then the answers go in z because that's the letter that I'm looking for. Then you would recopy you know, the first and second columns, find the majors and the minors, multiply together and then subtract, that sort of thing. But you're always look, putting the answers, the answers go in whatever variable you're looking at, that column. Just wanna make sure you guys see that.